Coffee is the second most traded commodity in the world after oil. A lot of India's coffee is exported and people go abroad and they'll buy Italian coffee thinking that it's coffee that's grown in Italy but the truth is that Italy doesn't actually grow any of its coffee. Coffee can really surprise you happily. Like every time you brew your coffee, it's going to taste differently. Just like in wine, there are wine tasters. In coffee, there are coffee cuppers. Coffee is a very, 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 very complex uh, beverage compared to wine. So the first wave of coffee was the mass production of coffee. Instant coffee was everywhere, people were drinking their homes and their offices. Uh, the second wave of coffee was when people started stirring towards specialty coffee. So they started using terms like espresso, latte, cappuccino. The third wave of coffee, uh, the distinctive features are you pay attention to where you're getting your coffee from, how it's harvested, uh, what the implications of that coffee. And what we're doing over here is we're part of the third wave of coffee. Uh, and in that, instead of treating it as a commodity, you treat it sort of an art, uh, like an artisanal product, like wine. Coffee is a very difficult crop to grow. So we're working with those farmers which have got their quality standards properly set. So once that coffee is sourced from there, we get the beans over here. And we clean the beans over here because sometimes some like cement is there, some bangles are there, something like that. And also the defects are sorted out over here. So that green bean, is kept in a sack and it comes to the roasting room. After that, we start roasting. So each bag is kept separately because each stage has got a different altitude, different processing, different water content, moisture content. So the essence is to highlight the flavor of that estate. The profile, by profile we mean how the coffee is roasted, at what temperature and what time. So each bag has got a different profile altogether. And once that roasting is done, it goes to the brewing station and, and it's brewed over there. By roasting we mean that the green beans is a raw material and we are converting it into a roasted one. So there's a big machine, it's a, we've got a 12 kg probat over here. And what happens is we load the green beans in the machine and there's a drum inside and there's a flame below. So basically the drum is rotating continuously and there's a flame below that keeps heating the beans. And that's how the color changes and the coffee from green gets to the roasted ones. Once the roasting is complete, once the desired profile is achieved, we just pull out the batch and it falls in a cooling tray. Once these beans are cooled down, we pull out in the bucket. There's light roast, mild roast, darker roast. And we don't use the term stronger or something. We use a mild, light, darker. Now, higher you roast, it's gonna be bitter. Lighter you roast, it's gonna be, it'll be having a lot of fruity flavors, a lot of earthy flavors. Really recommended to have your coffee if they're whole beans in the first three to four weeks. They're really fresh. Not that it gets bad, but the experience, the flavor and the aroma will start losing out. So after roasting, it goes to the brewing station. And by brewing, we mean how you make your coffee. And there are various ways of making your coffee. Like it's not just the espresso machine. There are, there's AeroPress, there's French press, there's pour overs. So there are a lot of ways of making your coffee. In fact, if you take one batch of coffee and brew it in different methods, it's gonna taste different completely. So how you brew also changes everything. Cappuccino, flat white, iced latte, these are all espresso based drinks. And espresso is nothing but taking 18 grams of coffee and extracting 34 ml of uh, brewed coffee from that. So passing hot water through the ground and you'll get the espresso. Many people think like bitter coffee is the best coffee and it has got more caffeine. Whereas uh, the fact is percentage wise if you see, lighter coffee, lighter roasted coffee would have more caffeine content than the darker roasted coffee. We are working with the farmers directly. So there's a kind of traceability. So we want the people when they have their coffee to experience where exactly the coffee is coming from. Whereas uh, the business model being different, uh, instant coffee they'll be purchasing it in bulk. There won't be any traceability in that because uh, it might have uh, some from Chikmanglu, some from Kurg and they'll be just mixing it in the auctions that they buy from. People think that you know you need these fancy machines and big machines, a lot of investment and all. But you can brew your coffee very easily at home even by using the chandni that you have for making tea. All you have to do is uh, just take some water, 
like one mug of water. Boil it. Do not add coffee to the boiling water because it spoils the coffee completely. Let the water boil and switch off the gas. Keep it. Keep the water for like 30 to 45 seconds like that, and then add the coffee to it and stir it. Keep it for like three minutes, and your coffee would be ready. Just sieve it with the chutney that you have. My only advice would be to be aware of what's going into your body. Pay close attention to your coffee, where it's come from, who's made it, how you're brewing it. And of course, if you have any questions, just come to our roastery and ask us whatever comes to your mind.